Depression affects 1 in 4 people at some point in their lives. And while there are many antidepressant drugs out there, they often don't work for very long or make people feel like zombies. Depression is a complex disease we don't understand entirely yet. And treatment might vary from person to person. But in this video I want to give another alternative approach in fighting depression. And I will focus on the connection between our immune system and our mood. And I want to show scientifically proven ways on how to treat depression by fixing inflammation levels. I have timestamps for different parts of this video in the description, so feel free to jump to any section. Also, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. So inflammation is a protective response of our immune system against anything that could cause us harm. And inflammation is what keeps us alive when we experience wounding or an infection. And while we want a short boost in inflammation during infections, inflammation can become chronic due to things like stress or diet. And chronic inflammation is a problematic condition here, as it can wreak havoc everywhere in your body. And new research even shows us that it can strongly affect your mood and eventually lead to depression. For decades we thought that our brain is unassailable and shielded by the protective blood-brain barrier. But this view has changed, as Professor Bullmore, also of the books Inflamed Mind, explains in his talk. Over the last 20 years, the, the Berlin Wall in the brain, like the Berlin Wall in Berlin, has fallen. And if you think now about uh, how things are organized, there is increasing evidence that these macrophages and cytokines, these inflammatory cells and, and proteins in the blood, can get across the blood-brain barrier. They can get into the brain. They can excite the brain's own immune cells, the brain's own macrophages, which confusingly have a slightly different name, they're called microglia. So they, they can stir up inflammation in the brain and that inflammation can damage nerves and cause some of these changes uh, that ultimately lead to depression. That's the new way of thinking. It's a much more direct connection between what's happening in the body biologically and what's happening in the brain psychologically. When we talk about depression, we also have to consider the importance of our genes. And in fact, there are about 10 genes identified that show a strong connection to depression. However, as this 2013 paper describes it, 8 of these 10 genes have a function in the immune system, which again brings us back to inflammation. So do you remember the last time you were sick and you felt kind of feverish and warm? So this increase in body temperature is actually not caused by the virus or bacteria that infected you directly, but rather by our immune system that tries to fight the threat. And it is super interesting that researchers found that people with depression have also elevated body temperatures compared to healthy individuals. However, the strongest evidence that depression is an inflammatory disease probably comes from the fact that people with depression have elevated levels of pro-inflammatory molecules in their blood. And this study here, for instance, found that three inflammatory markers were positively associated with depression. And that association was the strongest in clinically depressed patient samples. Meaning that the higher the inflammation, the more severe was the depression. Of course, there's always the question of causality. Meaning, what came first, the inflammation or the depression? To figure this out, a group of researchers followed people who had chronically increased inflammation levels in the blood and wanted to see if those people develop depression more frequently than other people do. And indeed, the researchers found that the hazard ratio for depression increased by 44% for each standard deviation increase in C-reactive protein, which is a marker for inflammation. Meaning that the higher the biomarker for inflammation, the more likely it was that people develop depression later in life. Another way to figure out the question of causality would be to somehow induce inflammation in the body and then see whether it leads to depression. And I know it sounds kind of cruel, but there's a reason why sometimes inflammation needs to be induced in a patient's body. And a good example here are people who suffer from hepatitis C infection. As those people get injected with an inflammatory cytokine, the interferon alpha. And a study actually found that just three months after interferon alpha treatment, 40.7% of the patients suffered from full blown depression. However, a really cool study found that when people were injected with interferon alpha 
And then we're either giving the omega-3 fatty acid EPA or placebo the incidences of depression were three times lower in the group that received the omega-3 fatty acid compared to the placebo. The last study brings me to the final part of this video, which discusses on how to treat depression by lowering inflammation. So there are a couple of ways on how to lower inflammation, such as reducing your stress levels, lose some body weight, include periods of fasting, don't eat processed food, and fix your gut health. But for this video, I want to focus on another approach that is now officially recognized as a treatment for depression which is the use of omega-3 fatty acids. Okay, let's jump right into the research. So for one study, researchers enrolled children who suffered from depression and gave them either 1000 mg of omega-3 capsules daily or safflower oil capsules as control. And as you can see in this graphic here, the omega-3 group showed a major drop in scores for depression and the researchers said that the effect of omega-3 is highly significant. Of those on omega-3 treatment, 7 out of 10 had a greater than 50% reduction in childhood depression rating scale. Of the placebo, none of the 10 patients had a greater reduction than 50%. Omega-3 intake can also have a positive effect on the mood and energy levels of healthy people, which is shown by this study here, that gave healthy volunteers either omega-3 or placebo and found that after 35 days, the omega-3 group showed an improvement in mood with increased energy and reduced anger, anxiety, fatigue and depression states. Especially if you work in a stressful environment, it might help to keep a healthy omega-6 to omega-3 ratio for the sake of your mental health. A study found that omega-3 supplementation lowers inflammation and anxiety in medical students. Med students are generally healthy, but sometimes they stress a bunch of people. And this study here could actually show that omega-3 supplementation reduced anxiety compared to the placebo. And the effect was the strongest in those students that showed the highest omega-3 blood levels. Okay, if we assume that inflammation is the cause of depression, why is it that many people develop depression after a traumatic event? So, psychological stress actually triggers inflammation. And this could be nicely shown by a study published in the American Journal of Psychiatry. Volunteers were asked to undergo the so-called TRIO social stress test, which includes public speaking in front of judges that are trained to maintain a neutral expression as well as an arithmetic component, during which the participant is asked to count backwards from 1022 in steps of 30. If a mistake is made, he has to start again from the beginning. No. 1022. The study found that the stress test leads to an increase in inflammation in healthy subjects, as well as in people with major depression. However, even though the people with depression showed higher levels of inflammation already before the test, the stress induced by the test spiked the inflammation level significantly higher than for the healthy control people. Now, as I said in the beginning, depression is a complex disorder and there's probably no one suits all approach to it. However, what I hope to accomplish with this video is to provide an alternative way on attacking depression. And if we consider that most people nowadays have a very unhealthy ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid levels, I think it's a worthwhile attempt not only to treat your mood or depression, but also to improve your general health. Alright, I have links for books and podcasts about this topic in the description. Also, a video that might spike your interest discusses the connection between our gut health and our mood, or a video that explains on how to increase your BDNF levels naturally, which is a very important protein for brain health. Alright, thank you for watching and see you next time. Mm -hmm.